everybody, welcome back to another video. I'm Football from Gaming here, and today I'm playing some more Bloons Adventure Time Tower Defense. So today I'm doing Top 10 Allies. Woo! I'm doing another list, I guess, ranking video. Uh, so I did this with trinkets. Um, I did this with heroes. I haven't done it with weapons yet. I know I talked about that, so let me know if you want to see me do a Top 10 Weapons. Uh, yeah. But today we are doing Top 10 Allies. I probably should have done this already. It's pretty easy to do. Uh, truthfully, as I went over this list, I realized when I got to number 10, people were like, so I got a recommendation in the last video from Banana Gamer, one of my members, thumbs up Banana Gamer, uh, to do allies, um, well not my last video, last Boon's Venture from Tower Defense video, to do a allies ranking. I'm like, yeah, I probably should have done that by now, I'm sure I'll do it. He was like, oh, you can do 10 or 25, and I'm thinking to myself, I don't think there's 25 good allies. Like, truthfully, like, I could probably come up with the 25 list, but how many allies are there? Like, straight up. There's six rows, so I'm, I'm gonna ignore the edges, I'll add those later. 6, 12, 18, 24, 30, 36, 42, 48, 54. I don't have those, so then 54 and 3, I have 57. 57 allies that I have. I don't think half of them are really worth being in a top list, so I could probably rank every single ally here, but. A good half of them would have been pretty just random because a good half of them are just pretty much useless and they're all just about even at that point so instead i'm going to be doing a list of top 10 because that's easier it encompasses the most useful allies the rest of them really aren't that good they're just sort of like spammable extra damage uh these ones are more either more powerful or more unique abilities and without further ado because i've dragged it on a little bit uh let's get started so number one you can probably guess who it is. It is indeed our good old friend Cobra. So Cobra is super useful. He will make money. He makes lives, which I guess could be useful. He's super duper cheap, only at $400. He actually does some damage. He's pretty low, but he has two layers of damage, which means he actually does decent like support abilities for the first couple rounds. If you can place like three Cobras or two, even two Cobras as your starting defense, especially if you have lives, you can just carry with that for a while because he'll regenerate lives too so you can either even afford to leak some balloons and that doesn't even go against you long term since he'll just make them back for you not to mention well okay no if that was it he would be a really good ally but he would not be number one on this list good money making is great he's one of the most efficient money makers in the game second to maybe tuxedo jake but he straight up might be the most efficient money making tower ally anything in the entire game which is pretty good to know that like that's pretty impressive i'm not going to comment on level 7 tuxedo jake but for the most part at the very least ignoring tuxedo jake cobra is the best money making in the game total obviously he's an epic ally so you get him pretty late but once you get him he's so broken but then he also has two upgrades those two upgrades being attrition slowly chips away at the health of all more class balloons which i don't think does a ton of damage but it's pretty useful i'm just gonna ignore double tap by the way the fact that he just attacks twice as fast insignificant as i said not bad attack power for 300 bucks not bad but it's not really worth it uh but attrition super useful once again it's a nice buff but it wouldn't have made him number one but then this upgrade monkey stim reduce the cooldown on all your powers and activated ability wait it reduces cooldown on powers okay i didn't even know that <laughs> so i'm doing like a ranking list put him at number one and i find something else that makes him even better i mean granted powers not the most useful thing in the world most of their cooldowns aren't even all that long but i didn't know he reduced the cooldown of powers i've read that description so many times you think i would have remembered that by now but yeah so apparently it works well with powers as well but the main thing about that is ability cooldowns so it's not only all oh, reduces them by like five percent ten percent no 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 reduces them by 50 percent he cuts ability cooldowns and i'm assuming power cooldowns in half in half you have an ability like Phoenix, where full uptime normally, super OP, you get two Phoenixes. Just straight up doubles the power of any ability in the game. That is nutty. There are a lot of abilities that are fairly mediocre because they have a long cooldown and maybe reset at the end of the round. For example, PB's ability. Um, there's a couple others that do that. I think Jake's, like Jake's suit does. There are a few other abilities that act like that. So you use the ability and it resets the second the round ends, like it goes away. Half ability cooldown can make those abilities much more useful since it doesn't take that long for them to come back up. It makes a big difference and for some characters it can go from ability being 30%, 40% uptime which is pretty lame to 
60%, 80%, 70%, and in some cases, if they're a little over half uptime normally, straight up full uptime. For example, Flame Princess is a really good one, where with Cobra and a bit of ability cooldown trinkets, you can easily get up to that, um, I guess full uptime, I don't know, I was gonna say like 100% ability cooldown reduction, but that's not true. Uh, but full uptime, which is really useful, easily puts Cobra on number one. The money making would make him close. The ability cooldown alone would make him close. Combined, he's there's no competition. He's number one. Obviously, feel free to argue with this list, but I'm pretty sure we can all agree Cobra's number one. On to number two. This one might be a bit more debatable. Hunson Abadir. So Hunson Abadir is another super useful utility. So he doesn't do damage. Well, yeah, no, he doesn't do damage. But he doesn't make money. He steals the souls of balloons. Yeah. So basically, he will decamo balloons. He will slow down balloons drastically. At best, maybe half speed, but probably less than half speed. And it's really good. It works on mobs. It gets a bit expensive because you need the mobs to hero upgrade, but really good. Works on ZMGs, DTs, all that stuff. It'll decamo DTs. It's one of the only sources of camo DDT. Decamos, I guess. Decamo and DTs is one of the only things that can do that, which is crazy overpowered. Super good. And it may or may not give a damage buff. It's a little unclear. I know, for example, Light Sword and I think um, Hunter Mouselin's Soul Steal ability does, where they make balloons take double damage. I don't know if that's true with Mobs Terror. If it is, cool. If it's not, then I don't know. But it may or may not give double damage as well. If so, it makes it even better. Hunts and Abadir are obviously not going to do much for, against the bad balloon, except once it pops, it's pretty useful, but for the most part, just not really, but super OP ally, one of the best in the game, works really well if you don't have those camo detection trinkets yet, or if you just want to try to squeeze out an extra trinket slot, uh, Hunts and Abadir are super great, super useful. If you're struggling against anything that's not the bad balloon, he will make it a joke. He's really good. On to number three, we have... Vampire King. You probably knew this was coming. So some of you would be like, what? Vampire King's number one. He's unpowerful. Or maybe two. Nah, I'm not putting him there. I'm putting him third. Pretty powerful, but not like, he's not the tier of Cobra, and I don't think he's as good as Hans and Abadir either. So Vampire King has a few massive advantages. First things first, he has infinite range. It says that in his pros column. It's true. He has in infinite range. Uh, the big weakness is that he doesn't have targeting. He will target any balloon. He'll pick any balloon on screen and attack it. Except that's a lie, because I'm full well convinced that his targeting, quote unquote, random, is not random. Obviously, he's not always going to target what you want, but I'm pretty sure he has some form of cycling between the targeting. I don't think they make him target a random balloon. I think they straight up have, like, him cycling targeting each hit, so he'll attack first, last, close, whatever. So, pretty sure he's not quite random, but pretty good. Uh, he can uh, pop all balloon types, so he can pop lead and camo. Oh, can he pop camo? Pretty sure he can pop camo, and he can definitely pop lead. Super duper duper useful. Um, he's a little expensive at like 1800 bucks, and his upgrades are a bit more. But overall, he's not that expensive, and does a lot of damage. It may only say, if you look at his stats, damage to blah blah blah. But he gets increased attack speed, increased damage, and I think even more damage, yeah. Oh, so yeah, he gets pierced attack speed and damage buffs. Just his upgrades alone makes him super powerful, but if you combine him with other buffs like um, Guru Meter, which isn't super useful with him, but if you have like Devil Monster Bass in range, increasing his damage again, he's just a super useful ally. And because of how cheap he is and the fact that he can pop lead and I believe camo, don't quote me on that, you can let me know in the comments if for sure he does. Pretty sure he does. Uh, super useful damage, super overpowered, he is great. But I realize now it's already been 10 minutes, this is taking a while. On to Tech Terror, gotta speed this up a bit. Tech Terror is number 4. Insane damage, insane speed, insane pierce, insane everything. He doesn't have camera protection, you can't pop purple balloons. Purple's not really an issue, but the camera protection's a little annoying. But he's really expensive, he costs $12,000 compared to um, Vampire King's 1800. Tech Terror's stronger, don't get me wrong, but with the lack of camera protection, and the fact that he's that much more expensive, Vampire King is a lot better. But Tech Terror is definitely super great. Obviously, Vampire King's a legendary, so Tech Terror's a bit different. They're only an epic. So, yeah, you can get more of them easier. Tech Terror's a pretty good ally. It's insanely overpowered. On to number five, because I had speed run time. Number five, we got Lemon Hope. Lemon Hope can use his gift of music to inspire other characters to fight more efficiently. Woo! 
It makes other characters attack faster. Uh, he was nerfed. He used to be better, but now he's base of 30%, I believe. Then it goes to 40 then a 50% with Beautiful Melody, and then obviously with Encore, he can target two towers. 50% attack speed buff. That's pretty nice. He can pick two towers. He can give it to allies as well. He can be equipped to a lot of people. He's not all that expensive. I mean, like, he costs some money, like 800 base costs, and the upgrades, the upgrades in total cost another, like, 2,000-ish, more like 3,000. In total, he's a little over 3,000 bucks, which isn't that bad, considering you're getting 50% extra attack speed. You have something like a tech tier that costs a lot more than that much, like closer to 8,000 in total. 50% increase attack speed is a lot cheaper than just buying him, so, you know, it's pretty good. It's a nice buff, it's really powerful, and it's not that hard to get. Only a super ally, which is a bit of an advantage as well. I believe he's one of the only super heroes on this list. Nah, I got a couple. Um, but yeah, pretty good. On to number six, we have the first and only rare... Bimo! You knew Bimo would be on this list. Bimo is a rare ally. She's the only. She, he, I don't know. It's a robot. Bimo's the only ally on this list. Or the only rare ally on this list. That's a hint, I guess. Uh, because she's money making. And money making instantly makes you a really good ally. You know, especially when there's one of two. <laughs> At least realistically. Other allies have various money making techniques, but none of them are as good as Bimo or Cobra. Bimo makes less money than Cobra, however is more expensive, does not attack, and is less efficient. So, you know, Bimo is not nearly as good as Cobra. She's a little bit more annoying to collect. Obviously, you only have to collect her one at a time, so it's a bit better in some sense. But once you get um, a monkey farmer, she's more annoying. And she didn't make a ton of money. She's pretty good for a rare ally, really great. One of the best rares in the game. Like, rare things to get, period. Super useful, but I'm not going to put it higher than number six. Pretty good. If you get a chance to get Bimo earlier game, really big deal. I remember after I got my first Epic Wish Rule, but I got like 12 rares trying to get Bimo. And then I got Bimo, and then I was happy because Bimo was good. And then, you know, I got a Cobra like two days later, and then it didn't matter. Anyways, on to number seven, back in the super rare list. We got Gumball. He stuns balloons. He's kind of like Hunt Snapper here, but, but worse. Uh, he is a bit cheaper overall, like he's quite a bit cheaper. He does the polymorph ability that Sam does, turn them into like animal balloons, which is good. Uh, he does not have basic camera detection, which is something to point out. Um, he does damage, but which is better than Hunts and Amity, but he didn't really do enough damage for it to be worth it. Um, mostly you want to target him. He's really good against CMGs, as I said, since no camera detection, even if given, uh, is not great. Well, can you give? I don't know. Even if like decamo, then do a great job against DDTs, uh, but really good against CMGs. He can practically promise stun then if you have two of them it works really well and since he can be equipped to pb and and commander passy and warrior pb you can get a lot of him that's true with almost all the allies i mentioned by the way almost all of them can have multiple thanks to various characters upgrades so super useful a good stun nothing too crazy but definitely deserves a spot on this list on to number eight we have who do you think it is it is dr dr monkey Dr. Monkey is a, just a really weird tower. He has a lot of various skills. Uh, at base, he decamos, de regens, de all that stuff to normal balloons, which is actually really useful. In my opinion, he's probably the best decamerer in the entire game for normal balloons, so really useful in that sense. And, you know, if you buy his upgrades, slowing solution and damage decoction. Decoction? Yeah, decoction. Um, I don't know why I thought that was misspelt. Whatever. The two of them combined, you slow down and damage balloons over time. It's just really good. Against normal balloons, anything below mode class balloons, because I don't think they get affected. Um, it's just a really good job. Just a lot of damage, a lot of utility. That slow is good. And yeah, just really powerful. Plus, if you go just one step further, it's a bit expensive. You can get alchemy, turn the balloons to gold, get some extra money. As I've said, I really value money making in this game. There are not too many options, and Dr. Monkey's actually a really efficient one. He makes a lot of money if you get him earlier on. But obviously, once mobs come, they just cross over, pop, the balloons don't get golden, and he loses that benefit. But he's pretty good earlier game. He can be useful late game, but not nearly as much. Then we move on to number nine. We have, nope, Monkey Farmer. <laughs> so Monkey Farmer is another one that is 100% utility. You could argue that he shouldn't be on this list, and you would be right, because he picks up things. So basically, he is the... He's, I guess, for a lazy person's tower. Uh, but late game, he's just nice to have. Like, 
He works well with Cobra. He works well with the treasure chest keys, thought cannon wand. He's just a good tower, but beyond that, he kind of sucks. So if you want him for that, if you want to be a bit lazy and have him pick up some gold and stuff for you, which I personally really like, he's a really good ally. I feel like he deserves a spot on this list. You could argue he should be number 10th, and you could argue that he shouldn't be on the list at all. I don't know. Let me know once again. Then, that, I actually ended up making good time. I spent, spent 10 minutes on the first three, and then the next, like, five I did in, like, a minute. Anyways, we're finally on to number 10. It is Lady Unicorn. Yeah, I said no before, but now nah, she's on here. Lady Unicorn. There wasn't anyone better. That's pretty much my reasoning for this. If you look through the list of allies, I mean, Martin's okay... Betty Groff, pretty decent, like, there's a lot of decent damage dealers, but there's nothing really that useful, and I mean, I'm, I'm gonna be honest, Lady Manicorn, you're a pretty good tower, you're not the best, but you're pretty good, uh, you can ignore all of her upgrades, her limited amount of damage is pretty useless, she does, like, she ends up doing a couple layers of damage, but it's very specific how her damage works, and more often than not, it's just not worth it, you're better off going something more reliable, uh, even if it's a bit weaker. The main thing she's used for is you can place towers on her. Yay! So, you know, if there's water or lava and you don't want to give someone a trinket slot, Lady Rainicorn. That's pretty much it. She does not protect people from negative effects. If you place her on, like, a pit of fire, a, like, I don't know. If you place her on a map, like on the electric triangles in Lemon Grab, and then the electric triangle turns on, every tower on her, including her, will be disabled. Yeah. That would have made her a far better tower and far higher up on this list, but basically, kind of similar to Hans and you're part of him. Um, she just saves you a trinket slot in very specific cases, so she's good, I guess, but she's not that great. She is a pretty solid number 10. But anyways, yeah, that's that's my allies list. Hopefully you guys enjoyed. Um, consider giving the video a like if you did. Uh, subscribe and join the football from the squad. We're nearing the end of September, but it would be incredible we can make it to 1500 before it ends got a couple days left do you have a couple days left yes you have a couple days left not many but a couple um yeah you guys are incredible let me know if you guys have some differences it would be like ah, i would my tier list would be this or my top 10 list would be this or i don't think you should have used monkey farmer or i think unsnabity is better than cobra or vampire kings worse than tech terror or whatever you want to say Leave a comment, I'll respond to it probably, I'll take a look at them. Have a wonderful day, thank you all for watching, I'll see you all tomorrow. Bye!